I know what you must be thinking. The Suicide Squad? It's not an MCU movie. Then why am I doing this? Right? Let's just call it an exception. Since it is a James Gunn movie with full creative liberty, I consider it to be an unofficial MCU movie. In a way, it is. After seeing characters like Killmonger, Thanos, the Flag Smashers, Loki, He Who Remains, I believe the core of MCU, at least right now, is empathy. You don't have to support me or be on my side. All I want for you is to understand my point of view. The world we live in is no longer black and white. All of us, whoever we are, we are because of our actions and consequences. The distinction between good and bad is subjective. The Suicide Squad does this the best. I call it best because some of these suggestions are so subtle that if you don't realize it, you will miss them. Actually, you have to miss them the first time. That is what adds value to future viewings. Personally, I don't consider this movie to be a bunch of villains on a mission to save the world. The mission is just an excuse for us to truly understand who they are and what are their motivations and ask the question, are they truly evil? Some might consider it glorifying criminals. I understand their point of view. These characters have done some very bad things and so they deserve to be punished. Still, you need to have a clear picture before you give out judgment. That's what this movie is about. Perhaps that's what the whole superhero genre is about. It's about inclusivity. These are weird people wearing strange costumes. Nevertheless, they are flesh and blood individuals like us. And hence, they deserve to be included. So, next time you see someone on the street whose appearance or behavior disgusts you, just bear in mind that they are people just like you with their problems, struggles, and joys of life. Each and every character of this movie is thoroughly fleshed out and each of them deserve to be talked about separately. Hence, I am going to do exactly that. Before I start with individual characters, I need to say this. You must have watched this movie recently enough to remember, otherwise none of what I say is going to make sense. Abner Krill aka Polka Dot Man I don't do favorites, but I'd like to say that Polka Dot Man is the character whom I understood the most. His actions, motivations, each and every line of his carried weight. Right at the beginning when Bloodspot says, we're all gonna die, he replies with, I hope so. It's meant to be a comic relief, but as we proceed with the story, the meaning of the line becomes clear. In the world of superheroes, every parent must be wanting their child to grow up and be celebrated as other heroes. Abner's mother takes it to the extreme by experimenting on him. These actions of her have defined his life. Just by visuals, we see how Abner sees the world. To him, everybody in the world is his mother the person who he hates the most. And he can't stop it. Just imagine how hard must be to live like that. So when he says ahead in the movie that he liked Milton, a random guy who was their driver, this person must have been very important for Abner. This adds value in the sense that it indicates that the story isn't just what you see on the screen. It's like the events of this movie happened as it would happen in the real world and James Gunn is that invisible omnipresent guy with the camera, recording just selected scenes to give you the gist of the story. Nanawe aka King Shao. Just by appearance, he looks like a part human and part Shah. For characters like these in movies like these, their personality development ends here but not in the Suicide Squad. Here, we get to see both human as well as shark side of him. He has a shark body with mutated feet and a mind of a human. As a human, he wishes to be included in the community. There are subtle hints to that in form of him trying to read a book, him wanting to spend time in a club with his friends, 
by wearing a disguise, a fake mustache. Unfortunately, his physical appearance limits him from having every human experience he instinctively craves for. Since his brain is not as smart as human brain, his behavior is more childlike. This highlights a very important quality, innocence. As a shark, he craves human meat. But when Ratcatcher asks, would he eat his friends? Nanawe says no, to which Bloodsport and Peacemaker are quick to say he is lying. But he is not. Peacemaker. This one is an interesting character. It seems that James Gunn has purposefully withheld his backstory. This way, we will have a disconnect when he betrays the team. Having said that, Peacemaker is right in his own way. He does not care how many men, women and children he has to kill to maintain peace. The logic holds in his statement. Some secrets are better left uncovered, otherwise it may lead to chaos. Peacemaker understands it. In a way, he is right. He is a soldier. Killing is bad, but when at war, you have to kill. And Peacemaker does not discriminate based on gender, age, race or even species, I assume. After all, he ordered a drink for a rat. He kills people but has a code. This is why he is disgusted by the thought of killing for money, something Bloodsport does. Harley Quinn At this point, we have seen enough to know everything about her. Still, I feel there is a new side of her that we saw in this movie. Harley Quinn is crazy, but there is a reason behind her craziness. Just like any other human, She too feels a range of emotions depending on the experience, but she has learned to mask them. Whenever she feels that she is getting emotional, she quickly changes the topics with jokes. When Javelin dies, when Milton dies, when the squad comes to save her, and finally when she mourns the loss of Rick Flagg, her friend. Ratcatcher 2 She comes from a life where she is ignored and is insignificant just like rats. So the biggest reward she can get is knowing that she matters and so do her rats. Just like Nanawe, she is still trusting. She is perhaps the character who understands empathy and does not want to prejudge anyone. That's because she has been on the receiving end of misjudgment. That is the reason why she got arrested and sent to the prison for the most deadly criminals. She delivers one of the most powerful lines of the movie, saying, If I die cause I gambled on love, it will be a worthy death. Beautiful. Just beautiful. In a way, she is the one who bonds with all members, turning individual characters into a team by interacting with all of them. Bloodsport Just like other characters, he too is defined by his past. He believes that all the torture he received from his father has sucked all the good out of him. And so he acts like that. One thing he doesn't know is that just like how good can be corrupted, bad can be corrupted as well. Bloodsport has this drop of good that corrupts him at the very right moment when he decides to save the innocent people going against the orders. From that point, He is a hero, the leader of the squad. Rick Flagg There is nothing much to talk about him. He is the ideal good boy, always wanting to do the right thing. He is the one who demands your trust, saying, These are villains, but I trust them, so should you. Starro Sometimes, some are just too different to share the opinion of good and bad with you. The big starfish clearly has people in his control against their will. But this is the only way he can communicate with humans, to tell them that all this destruction that is happening is not his fault. He does not want any of it. He was happy floating in space watching the stars. It was humans who captured him, experimented on him, kept him imprisoned for decades. The humans acted. All Starro did was react to the situation. Even if he wanted to return to space, he was too big to be carried up there. I believe Starro knew that sooner or later he will be killed, and so he did whatever a dying animal does. Thinker 
As humans, curiosity drives us to achieve great things. What we don't realize is all the sacrifices that happen on the way to success. We gladly use vaccines, but developing them takes a lot of experimentation and test subjects die in the process. Don't know if it is right or wrong, but this is what happens. It's for us to decide whether to carry out such experiments or not. The thinker is the one who has made this decision. Sacrifice is necessary for scientific enlightenment. Amanda Waller. She is the wall, the punching bag, someone towards whom we can direct our hatred. She represents the government that has done all these bad things over many decades. That is why we know nothing about her. We don't get any background to empathize with her. After all, we need a generic villain to overpower in order to feel good about it. Even if Amanda Waller wants to do good, she can because once she gives slack, none of the other villains would ever take her seriously. To tame the bad, she needs to be evil. She does exactly that. Waller's crew. This is us watching the events happening, bullets firing, people dying. Watching all the chaos from a safe distance where you don't have to face the consequences irrespective of what happens. The character arc of these people is what we are supposed to feel through the journey of this movie. These people sit in a comfortable office staring at the screen monitoring events remotely. That's why for them this is all a game. Just like we don't care about these characters initially. they too are shown to carelessly bet on who lives and who dies but over time they get attached enough to risk their job for these so called villains if not care for them then at least they understand enough that these villains are capable of doing good so they guide them towards victory what that one employee does to amanda waller is what i felt like doing which is why it felt so satisfying when waller falls unconscious i believe that even the other characters that died too quickly must have a deeper personality to explore but their death is necessary from the movie's point of view say for example you worked all day and then in the evening when you're tired your friends drag you to the theater to watch the suicide squad all you want to do is sleep hence the first scene is what brings you to pay attention at this point you must be thinking i am a complete fanboy of this movie and james gunn so i was meant to like it no matter whether this movie was good or bad this is not true to be honest i didn't like the movie on its first viewing that's because i hate unnecessary violence and killing it's only upon future viewings i realized the depth of it also talking in support of the extreme violence this is what happens in the real world or at least it would happen if these characters were real most of the movies we see no matter how accurate the truth is we get a beautified censored version of the reality in real world when someone shoots you blood does come out and your insides will be visible and you will die Also misunderstandings do happen where innocent people die for no reason in closing all i want to say is i think when james gunn started working on this project the main question he asked himself was this what can i do so that this story these characters and the events feel real not just good but real This is the absolute priority. It is this mindset that makes the Suicide Squad in my opinion a great movie. Thank you.